We have reached the appointed time to start our meeting, and a quorum is present. Today we have three papers, three items. We have been given ECI 212022, bracket 07, an information paper. The paper sets out the changes to the establishment of uh, directorate uh, officers since 2002 and also the approval of the, the items on the agenda uh, would have some bearing on the changes. May I remind members that uh, if you have direct or indirect procuring interest in relation to our today's items, please declare the nature of our interest in accordance with a, uh, paragraph 83A of the Rules of Procedure. Please also note uh, the relevant uh, requirements under Rule 84 if you have direct, direct procuring interest. First item, proposed creation of one supernumerary post of Chief Building Services Engineer, D1, in the Electrical and Mechanical Services Department for five years, with immediate uh, effect upon approval of the Finance Committee to, to head a new division in order to strengthen the planning and implementation of district cooling system projects. On the 22nd of January this year, the uh, Environmental Affairs Panel of this Council uh, was consulted on this proposal. To answer members' questions, we have Mr. Jose Yam, Principal Assistant Secretary for the Environment, Mr. Peng Yu Hong, Director of Electrical and Mechanical Services, Mr. Raymond Poon, Deputy Director of Electrical and Mechanical Services, Regulatory Services, and Mr. Barry Chu, Assistant Director of uh, Electrical and Mechanical Services, Electricity and uh, Energy Efficiency. As uh, Mr. Winston Chang, Chairman of the EA Panel, is not a member of this uh, committee, I would uh, briefly set out the uh, salient points of discussions of the panel in respect of this proposed item. The Environmental Affairs um, panel had a discussion, and here are some salient points. On the at a meeting held on the 22nd of January 2020, the Environmental Affairs uh, panel discussed uh, the proposal to create a the supernumerary um, chief uh, building services engineer post in the EMSD, and also the proposals uh, in relation to the efficiency, energy efficiency unit of the EMSD. The uh, panel do not oppose to the proposed uh, creation of post. The panel was of the view that uh, the post should be created uh, with uh, limited duration, and also th some areas of concern were raised by members, including energy, the work efficiency of the energy efficiency office, KITEC uh, district cooling system, and its performance, etc. Uh, the panel asked the administration to provide supplementary information as follows. First, the, uh, reorganize the number of posts in the reorganized energy efficiency office before and after re reorganization, and also the uh, operation and maintenance uh, costs of the district cooling system, and also how uh, effective the energy efficiency office has been in the reduction of uh, um, energy intensity and the carbon intensity. The relevant information has been provided to members uh, by CB1-930-1920-02. Oh, five members would like to ask questions. First, the first one is Dr. Lo Wai Kwok, followed by Mr. Tony Chai, Mr. Ho Chao, Mr. Poon Xiu Peng, and Mr. Wang Ting Kwong. 
Dr. Lu, five minutes. Thank you. First of all, I would like to say that I support the relevant uh, proposal to create the post in this item. District cooling system in recent years has been a successful green uh, development project in Hong Kong. In Kai Tak, it was uh, first the first area where this is applied, and uh, the uh, development would would take a few stages and. The uh, effect is such that uh, all the uh, public facilities, including hospital, the hospital, the schools, and the shopping facilities, will all have access to this uh, district cooling system. The environmental uh, efficiency and performance is uh, much better than. Uh, Individually installed uh, air conditioning systems. So this uh, and also this uh, co district cooling system in uh, Kai Ta will use uh, seawater for the coolant as the coolant, and therefore the heat uh, will be uh, dis dissipated uh, through the evaporation of the water. And this is a more environmental, environmentally friendly. And uh, when this was first uh, launched, uh, there was the need to uh, amend the legislation to provide for the charging and the uh, operation of such a system. I was the chairman of the uh, bills committee. Therefore, I do understand uh, the details. We also organize uh, visits to shopping centers and schools, and the users uh, told us that they were happy with the system. So uh, we should uh, use the, such the, such a system more extensively in. Uh, North East NT and Hong Sui Q, uh, this uh, green technology will be adopted as we are going to see more and more projects of this nature. We need to consider the the manpower, and it's therefore it's only appropriate that we increase the manpower provided to support the development. And that this is just a drop in the bucket, uh, so far as the quantity, the quantity of manpower is concerned. But I do want to raise a question here. We have gained some experience from the district cooling system in Kai Kai Tao. And uh, so, apart from the air conditioning cooling system, we should also con consider. Uh, Installing a common conduit or tunnel for utilities, so that uh, we can avoid the current situation whereby different departments uh, will have to take up the role for different uh, projects f at different times. The department should be better coordinated. Of course, uh, the government should also coordinate with the uh, utilities companies, so that we can uh, adopt a uh, up-to-date design. So this district cooling system would also uh, provide the uh, added advantage of uh, avoiding the frequent uh, digging up of roads. What is your plan of uh, promoting this? Mr. Yam, thank you, Chairman, and thank you, Dr. Lo, for your support in our proposal. We do need uh, to lay many uh, 
pipes uh, for the cooling system in order to provide for air conditioning. If you can recall, uh, we came in February uh, to apply for funding in the Dongchong DCS and similar to what Dr. Lowe said, uh, we tried to put all the pipes together in a large diameter uh, piping installation so as to convenient maintenance. When appropriate, we are also going to do that in the new development areas. Mr. Tony Tse, thank you, Chairman. The proposal asks for a dedicated officer to handle duties in the DCS projects and to achieve greater operational efficiency and effectiveness. So this chief um, services engineer will be responsible for doing energy efficiency and conservation. Am I correct? Secondly, in the beginning of last year, uh, this item has already been um, proposed as a permanent post. But as this is a, a district cooling system project, it can actually uh, be for about 30 years. But now after a year and a half, you ask for a supernumerary post. Is it because there was no pressing need to create this post? Or is it because many projects have been delayed due to the suspension of this post? And how many establishment posts would you be increasing in the next five years? I see that there is also a district cooling system in He Tao. In the LMC loop, uh, would you also be actually implementing this system as well? Let me try to give some um, simple responses, and if needed, I would defer to EMSD. We did set out in the paper that the creation of this post will be responsible for all work in relation to the DCS in preparation and uh, organization in tendering work. And when the system is commissioned to continue with uh, discussions and communication with users and stakeholders. The construction period is quite long because we need to look into the development of the new development area and then to link up our system to the buildings. Therefore, um, we also need to rely on the construction pace of the uh, buildings. This new post will need to uh, communicate with the stakeholders. Uh, we use a design build operate model in Kai Tak. Or after tendering, uh, there will be a management uh, company in charge of such work. However, we'll also need to monitor the development of the projects and it will be long term work. You asked uh, uh, why we already proposed this to the panel 
uh, one and a half year ago, and yet um, only brought this up uh, today. Uh, we did supply supplementary information in July in the CE's policy address. Uh, she mentioned there will be a reorganization of the establishments. And after review, um, we believe there was still a need for us to create a post. Uh, therefore, we are now coming back to the ESC to ask for a creation of a supernumerary post for five years. As to whether there will be any new projects in the coming years, other than the Kai Tak Phase 1 project, by the end of 2025, it should be about completed. And the new phase will be completed at the end of 2028. With the support of a finance committee, there would also be two projects in Dong Chong North and Gu Dong North, which would be completed in 2030. Another large project is in Hong Shui Q. We're working in advanced works right now, and we hope to complete it as soon as possible so that we'll be able to seek support from members as soon as possible. For the loop, our chief services engineer will continue to provide consultation, and the loop will be responsible for the its own construction. Currently, uh, they do not have experience in district cooling system. Therefore, the EMSD will also be uh, supporting them in their work. Mr. Holden Chow. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, one of the responsibilities of this post will be to handling duties in relation to the district cooling system. And I support it as it is a green project. I see in the paper that it is estimated that with the installations of DCS, uh, it would also bring along new job opportunities. Uh, do you already have an estimate? of how many job opportunities there would be with these new district cooling systems. I think that this is important. Second question. Out of the um, few posts today, I see that um, there is also A, B, and C for energy efficiency division. A renewable energy is the hottest topic in the world. Other than conserving energy, other countries, including our motherland, also um, emphasize the need to conserve energy and to use new energy efficiency installations. I think we need people to monitor these installations, and these would be new job opportunities. So when you are creating new posts in these positions, would you assess Um, how many jobs it would be creating of, instead of just conserving energy? Well, let us first hear from you first, and then I might um, ask a second round. We did assess the DCS 
in the beginning of installation to see how many jobs are created. In the Kaitak DCS project, we created 335 jobs. And for Dongchong East, uh, we believe uh, we could create 250 jobs. In Kutong North, we estimate uh, to be around uh, 200 jobs. Mr. Chow's question is really good. Uh, would there also be other job opportunities other than energy conservation? Well, I can um, show you some figures. In our paper, uh, we did um, mention our Green Energy Project 2.0, which will also be creating 250 jobs in the coming years and will be able to create about 50 jobs in the uh, green welfare NGOs. Um, the uh, financial secretary has uh, given us around uh, 1 billion to work on this, so we are able to also create another 200 jobs. So with all these uh, measures, uh, we'll be able uh, to create many job opportunities. So be rest assured, we are not only asking for a creation of a supernumerary post, it will also um, be uh, beneficial to the overall job market. Well, I'm happy to hear all these figures. We need to let the public know about these figures. So when you are uh, starting your new projects, we should emphasize more on the um, economic efficiency because these are actually new industries. I believe uh, we need to uh, work more in this line of work. Next, Mr. Poon Xiaoping. Thank you, Chairman. Well, I believe um, there is a need to create new posts when there is a need. We are already using the Kaitak DCS, and part of it is already operational and upcoming. And Tong Chong, Hong Shui Q, and Gu Dong are all under planning. People have asked me whether it could also be expanded to elsewhere, uh, such as to uh, Chang Kwan O, because these are also new development areas. Am I correct in understanding that the district cooling systems have a life of 30 years? So who would be responsible for the maintenance of the system? And we did mention a carbon neutrality target by 2050. So other than the DCS, the government has also um, taken forward many new initiatives such as a Green Energy Target, Green Schools 2.0, Energy Smart, and Green Welfare NGOs. And you would need uh, people to be working on these projects. So um, are these all linked to each other? Well, the Energy Efficiency Division has a branch has been set up for a period of time. So, what is the number of establishment there? I see that you're looking into uh, 42 uh, positions, and then there are also about 27 that are limited uh, position, time limited positions. Thank you, Mr. Poon. For your questions, I'll ask my EMSD colleague to say something about ma maintenance of the system. But let me first of all uh, talk about the district cooling system. When we consider where to put this, 
we will uh, cons we'll consider it uh, for new development areas. We need to uh, build the, a, a network of pipes for the supply of uh, cool water. It will be difficult to do this in a built uh, environment. But with uh, this support given, we can uh, certainly uh, do more to promote this system. Well, the system, uh, so-called lifespan of 30 years, is just for financial projections. Actually, with regular maintenance, the system can uh, go on for 30, 40 years and beyond. And also, we have a target of uh, carbon neutrality, and a no a many measures will be needed to do this, to achieve that. With this uh, chief engineer post, uh, with chief uh, building services engineer, engineer post, he will be uh, concentrated on uh, the c cooling system. Uh, the other uh, chief engineer will be uh, f more folk will be able to devote uh, their attention to the, the comp compulsory energy uh, efficiency labeling system and other areas. The two exist existing uh, chief engineers uh, will be more focused with this additional post created uh, dedicated to district cooling system. We have 40 non-directorate uh, officers in that particular division. Uh, 29 uh, teams are 141. Uh, we have 141 non-directorate uh, officers working in these teams. So for that's the change for 20 years. So we hope that you can members can support the creation of this code so as to promote uh, energy efficiency systems. First, uh, on uh, rec repair and maintenance. Well, this is a DBO project, design, building, and operation contract. This would uh, mean that uh, the uh, project time can be reduced. This is an uh, infrastructure for. For a long period to 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 run, and therefore the uh, the con 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 contractor, the selected contractor, would go for the most uh, economical um, way of uh, building the this the uh, system, and as a result, the uh, tariff can be reduced. We have some time limited posts because uh, depending on the progress of different projects such as a green school campus, a green uh, social welfare facility projects, and energy conservation projects for schools. These are, support, these are supported by time-limited posts. And once the projects are completed, the posts uh, will no longer be uh, needed. Uh, the, the duration varies. It can be up to 10 years. Mr. Wang Ting Kuang, I have three questions. First question What's the progress of the Kai Tak district cooling system? Second question Are you able to, uh, to carry out the project within the approved budget? And thirdly, uh, this particular New post holder will be asked to strengthen planning. What's the exact meaning of the planning to be carried out? And also, is there there there, there is already a team for the design and uh, promotion of district cooling system? Why do you need to another get another team now? Well, I will take the first question, and then the director would uh, respond to the other two questions. 
first of all, the progress of the Kitech district cooling system. The progress has been well. The first one will be completed in 2025. That's uh, broadly in line with the original time timeline. We have already informed uh, the, uh, the members that uh, the total budget will be uh, $4.9 billion. So far, we have been uh, progressing well and within budget. We don't foresee major problem with that. Director? For the Kitech DCS, in terms of uh, civil engineering works and the laying of uh, pipes, it's a 65% complete. Uh, EMS uh, facilities, 55% completed. So that's uh, probably in line with our estimated uh, timetable. This is uh, done in line with the uh, overall development of uh, KITEC. Will not uh, will not build the systems ahead of the, the actual uh, development projects. Earlier this year, in February, the council approved uh, si similar applications for Kutong and uh, Hong Sui Q is being planned. Actually, uh, in terms of the uh, capacity, it's, uh, the, the, the one for uh, Hong Sui Q is bigger than Tong Chong East. So the, the amount of work is uh, very extensive. In uh, back then, in two thousand and ten, there were two divisions created for green energy promotion. There were two chief engineer posts, and now since uh, people want to uh, take forward more green projects, and we have now got twenty nine divisions and so to even out the workload we will be able to do a better job in uh, those uh, areas and that's why we need to have this uh, additional chief engineer post created the the design team for Kitech DCS uh, is uh, supported by personnel, and there were there have been more working at the on the, at the front line. Without this new chief engineer, the span of control uh, for each chief engineer will be too will be too wide. So, in terms of contract management and uh, budgeting control. We'll have an issue. We'll have to cope. Uh, we will have to make sure that that this DCS will be completed within the the approved budget and uh, timetable. Other, Mr. Wong, uh, do, do you have any further questions? No, Miss uh, Starry Lee. So sorry. Uh, can we ask let uh, Mr. Yu to speak first? Uh, apart from this new post, there are another 42 uh, posts, uh, including 22 uh, seconder from other departments. Uh, would, these, uh, would the secondment of the, these uh, 22 officers affect the work of other departments? Uh, will these 22 officers be working in that uh, new division permanently? So you are going to con build a DCS for Kutong and uh, other new development areas. Is that that uh, you are going to save uh, two hundred million units of electricity and uh, one hundred forty thousand tons of carbon emission? Of course, that's uh, very good, uh, and it's, it would mean that this is a good investment. 
So compared with their normal cost, and uh, what would be the saving uh, of uh, the cost of uh, air conditioning if they use the, if you compare the use of a conventional system and this new DCS? Uh, what about private initiatives? If uh, they do have the necessary conditions to build a DCS, uh, would you encourage the private developer to do the same? Oh, we have 22 seconded officers for this division because uh, there will be t uh, a reorganization. Instead of uh, two divisions, we are going to have three. And each uh, division will be headed by a chief engineer. These, uh, o these officers are already the in the se in in the department, uh, so they will just be transferred to the new division, and we just need this uh, new CBSE chief uh, building services engineer to head the new division. As for the energy efficiency related questions, I'll ask I'll defer to Mr. Yam. Actually, the first stage of the uh, KITAC DCS is already in operation. We're we're talking about a thirty year. Uh, operation period. In other words, uh, we hope to recoup the uh, investment in infrastructure and day-to-day uh, -day operation costs in 30 years. And the cost of the KITEC DCS compared with independent air conditioning, a uh, water cool system uh, it, it is comparable. They are comparable. Do you mean that if they use the conventional air, con air conditioning system, that they will be paying much the, almost the same? Well, yes. The, in terms of the uh, tariff, it's similar, but uh, it's a, a green project. It's uh, good for uh, reducing emissions. Can this be uh, applied to other? <laughs> Housing estates or, or buildings. Well, we have considered the the case of uh, uh, residential buildings and the need for air conditioning. During daytime, uh, people would go to work and they would use the air conditioners uh, when at night. But for the non-domestic uh, premises, such as uh, commercial buildings, the the uh, time of using the uh, air conditioning system is uh, more or less uh, stable. Therefore, uh, we uh, will first of all uh, try to cover uh, commercial buildings. Uh, let me supplement. Uh, the The bureau has explained why we. Uh, do not think we should uh, cover residential buildings first, because if we do this for residential buildings, we may not be able to recover the cost in thirty years. So normally, this is um, this is uh, adopted bar for commercial buildings. Normally, when we consider whether to cover any residential buildings. We have to consider the size of the uh, E and M prime room, uh, because the, the original design may not have uh, provided the, the relevant room, the, the space for the uh, pipes. So we we'll consider this question of uh, availability of uh, space and the feasibility of laying the cooling pipes. And and uh, also whether we can recover the cost in thirty years for existing buildings in the covered district, we ask them to be connected to the DCS. Thank you. Uh, Chairman, for Kowloon City and Kuntong districts, 
I think you could also consider、um, taking these initiatives as well. Thank you. Ms. Ari Lee. Madam Chair. It seems that there's been a reorganization in structure in the bureau. The public has high expectations on the work of the government. And we see a lot of the work mentioned in the paper, such as energy saving and district cooling system. Are all on par with the latest trends? Have you re-engineered the processes? I would like to hear more about the、um, term or the nature of work after the. Reorganization.、Uh, uh, have you actually、um, taken out、uh, some of the obsolete work and added in new posts? We want to efficiently use、uh, new methods in our work. Director. Thank you. Thank you for your question. The MESD has always been looking into new initiatives to reduce the workload and to re-engineer our work to make it more energy efficient. We've always been carrying out such work in the past few years. From 2020、uh, till about now, we have listened to the views of the public, and the administration has invested more into our projects,、uh, such as the Green Schools 2.0 or the Green Welfare NGOs. And、um, asking for schools to take forward the green energy target, and to、uh, promote renewable energy in both government and private properties. Uh, we also try to help、uh, old buildings into saving energy, and every three years we review、uh, the energy、uh, code and also to try to promote the energy efficient labels. In the past twenty years, we have been continuously increasing our work in these areas and continuously reviewing our initiatives. Well, although we have、um, increased from nine divisions to twenty divisions, we see that. A district cooling system is actually a long-term and complicated project. It must be installed in time for the new buildings; otherwise, it would affect the buildings to be commissioned. In general, for buildings using DCS, the buildings would not have their own air conditioning system. Therefore, the DCS must be completed before occupiers move into the building. Therefore, at this critical stage, we believe there is a need to create a a chief engineer post to monitor the work and handle the duties.
And uh, currently, there's 15 billion in the DCS, and adding on to Hong Shui Q, it would be another 800 million. So there is a lot of work to be done. I hope that members will understand and support our proposal. Madam Chair, I understand that um, there is constantly change. Yes, I agree that we could create a new post, but we also need to streamline process and to make use of technology. So from the 515 people from April 1st, 2019 has already been increased to 580. So Is that actually a is that actually standard compared to other bureaus and departments? I do not have such figures on hand, but uh, we all have our own responsibilities. The increase in establishment and may not necessarily be directly related to district cooling system. Um, it may be uh, related uh, to our railway and also other duties related to other projects. We are trying our best to make good use of technology to try to reduce our workload. We adopt different types of technology to assist with our work. Uh, we thank you, Ms. Lee for once again raising this point, we will try our best to use innovation technology in our work. Part of the work of the energy efficiency branch is to uh, research into energy saving projects. And when we find uh, something new that is effective, then we will also promote it to the public. Mr. Toh needs a second round. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just want to follow up on the first round of questions because I didn't really get an answer. Uh, first, on the increase in workload and the pressing need. In the beginning of last year, uh, there was a request to create this post. So what was the workload in the past few years? Did you uh, uh, delay your projects or how did you ensure that the DCS projects were not affected? Uh, what are your plans for the next five years? Uh, we already know about all the DCS projects in Kutong North, Dongchong, and Hongshui-Q, and Kai Tak, etc. Is this post only responsible for all the above mentioned DCS projects? And this person will not be in charge of other projects. Therefore, giving rise the need to create another post when you expand into other areas. I asked about the Lok Ma Cho loop right now. Are you going to assist the loop in installing DCS? And who would be responsible in the future? Well, there is a time limit of the post for five years right now. After five years, is there anything that will go under the ambit of this new post? These are the questions I raised earlier in my first round. Director, thank you, Madam Chair and Mr. Tse for your questions. Let me try to answer the first two. In the beginning of 2020, we submitted a proposal to the Panel on Environmental Affairs and we worked to submit the proposal to ESC and FC. But in 2020, in November, the government made a decision that 
all proposals to be submitted to the ESC and FC should be withdrawn and reviewed. So did you uh, suspend your work? No, we did not do that. However, uh, we did some deployment uh, internally and considered our different duties. The DCS projects were not affected because this is actually an infrastructure project. We must ensure that our DCS is prioritized and completed uh, in the new development areas uh, for other projects. However, uh, they uh, have been they have been put in lower priority. We propose for a five-year supernumerary post uh, be, uh, because we estimate that we are going to review this post before the end of five years and to see whether other new projects have been uh, confirmed. As it, um, to the question on the Lok Ma Chao Lok Loop, I would defer to uh, Mr. Yam. Thank you. So, for the overall uh, loop development, it's a comprehensive uh, project. We have provided professional um, co comments and support uh, to the development of the loop. However, the work will not affect the developments in Hong Shui Q. Um, including the um, artificial um, island, we are going to look into whether we can also install a DCS on the um, artificial island and any work uh, related to DCS will be held responsible by this new chief engineer post. Mr. Chen Haken, first round. Madam Chair, I do not object to energy conservation and being environmentally friendly. However, I hope you recall that um, uh, the first district cooling system was set in Kai Tak and we were able to save around 1,900 units of electricity. I remember asking a question on when we are able to uh, get a return on the investment. The response I received was that uh, not everyone has moved in. Many NDAs are working in DCS projects such as Hong Shui Q and Kutong North. However, you have to understand that it costs a, a, a few billion to install such systems and you need to ask for new posts again and again. I just realized that on uh, in the uh, new Reclaim land in Lantau Island, you are also thinking of a DCS. I am still in doubt as we do not have any actual figures today. I hope you would ask this new post to look into when we will actually get a return on the investment and whether the money has been spent appropriately so that when we can draw reference from future district cooling systems, you need to assess how much you have invested in and to calculate whether you have achieved a return. Oh, uh, Who will take this question? Director? Thank you for your question. Mr. Chan, uh, in terms of uh, recovering the course, well, in the preliminary study for the DCS, uh, this was a uh, subject of a major concern. 
we said uh, that there will be a 30-year uh, recovery period, in turn, including the construction costs, operation during that 30-year period, and the uh, re recovery of uh, the cost of uh, supplying the water. We would uh, certainly uh, keep uh, the charges under review. The original estimate uh, was that we c we could do so. We could recover the total cost in thirty years, and a recent uh, review has uh, confirmed that this can could be achieved. As for new DCS in Ku Tongchong and uh, Ku Tong. We would uh, adopt the same uh, parameters in assessing the recovery period. We believe uh, 30 years would be good enough. And uh, at the same time, we have to make sure that the DCS is competitive. And the cost to the user would not be higher than uh, individu users of individual uh, air conditioning system with uh, water cooling so it, the cost uh, would be comparable that's one of the important parameter in the financial assessment so far the assessment has uh, informed us that this could be achieved well i don't think all new buildings in kai tech will use the dcs i think it's only government uh, buildings right i can't remember the detail so if you want to achieve uh, greater efficiency, how can you compel the new private uh, buildings in Kaitak to use the DCS? You you have to get more more and more get more users to be cost effective. Well, we will review the progress of the new development area, the land sale progress, and also the construction timetable of the uh, new projects, so, so as to decide whether we should uh, uh, speed up the implementation, Because we want to tie in with the uh, development timetable of the new of the users. We have the, the DCS uh, legislation specifying that within the uh, area set out in the law, the new buildings should use the DCS. And also the future property uh, buyers, individual buyers, uh, will be obliged to use the DCS. That will be in the land sales uh, provisions. For Kai Tech, towards the end of the year, many commercial buildings uh, will be completed and uh, commissioned, including the, the many uh, tall buildings, privately owned tall buildings near Kaitech Station. We believe that uh, the, the uh, usage uh, of the uh, Kaitech DCS uh, will increase uh, as they as these buildings become uh, occupied. Dr. N. Chung, regarding DCS. I remember more than 10 years ago, some European countries uh, implemented uh, this kind of system. So did the uh, mainland. But as uh, Mr. Gary Chen has indicated, the cost and the uh, maintenance costs are on the high side. We're, we've got the first DCS in Kaita. There are only 11 building uses. So the cost uh, was originally put uh, at uh, 1 billion, and now with uh, 
repeated uh, in increases in the budget is now more than five billion dollars in total cost. That's alarming. According to government officials, uh, the Kaitak DCS uh, has not been uh, fully implemented. Should we uh, wait a bit? Uh, let's wait until the Kaitak DCS has been fully completed before we uh, assess the uh, cost effectiveness. This DCS uh, project can last for a long time. And I know that there are new and emerging uh, technologies to reduce carbon emission. Some people have uh, said that uh, if we uh, go for rooftop uh, greening or general greening, uh, get more plants, you have uh, some organism to the, uh, absorb uh, carbon for you around the clock. So that would be uh, more worthwhile. I know some places, some, uh, some other people are doing this. So shouldn't we consider the extending this uh, particular project uh, until after the KITEC DCS has been fully commissioned. Director, actually we are going to conduct a financial assessment for each and every DCS project. We have to make sure that the cost can be recovered in 30 years and we have to consider the uh, job creation potential as well. Can we wait uh, until the completion of KITEC DCS, and that is uh, before we extend this to other areas. But uh, this DCS project is an infrastructure project. It's just like the other utilities, uh, when a new building is uh, com commissioned, you need to have the electricity and water supply, etc. So the DCS must be ready before the uh, new buildings are completed. And if we wait until the uh, completion of uh, the KITEC DCS before deciding to do it elsewhere, uh, we will not be able to extend this to, to other new development areas. And we need to achieve uh, tar the target of uh, carbon neutrality by 2050. And uh, if we pause now, it would have a great impact to, th to the achievement of that target. As for the greening and the reduction of the demand on uh, air conditioning, that's of course uh, important. Another equally important factor is to make sure that the air conditioning system is more efficient. The DCS uh, is very is one of the most uh, cost uh, effective and efficient uh, air conditioning system. And in in the design, we will adopt the latest technology. And as I've said, under the DBO contract, the contractor will have to do a lot of things to ensure that energy efficiency is achieved. And during the whole operational period, we would uh, regularly review the, the adoption of new technology in the central system. For example, uh, we, we can uh, adopt AI, artificial intelligence, to make sure that uh, optimum uh, if energy efficiency is achieved in the operation of the central uh, equipment. We have a pool of uh, talent and, uh, and the availability of new technologies to, to help us. Chairman, I just want to add that uh, it's okay that you build the uh, pipes 
in advance because you have a lot of underground uh, facilities uh, already. So it's okay to have the uh, pipes uh, built now. But uh, as far as I know, there are many new technologies which are very cost effective. For example, the solar energy for photo voltaic uh, solar panel and, and and glass material can be adopted for the for windows in new buildings a person uh, the uh, solar energy generator may not be good enough for uh, air conditioning but uh, it is already good enough for lighting and other uh, purposes you need to do a comparison of uh, a cost and benefit. If you have already done so, please let us uh, have more information. Well, we would uh, monitor the development of technology to see whether the more can be adopted for our projects and private projects. Uh, this is the first uh, DCS. Uh, the Kitech DCS is. Uh, the first ones. Therefore, we apply for funding support in stages. In 2013, we informed the FC that the total cost of the project would be something like $4.9 billion. And this uh, remains the uh, anticipated project for the entire uh, system. There's no budget uh, exceedance. Well, the world is developing very rapidly. And, uh, the technology referred to by Dr. N. Zhang is a commonly used already. So are we going to move ahead with the times? I have already said that we should uh, leverage on the use of uh, new technology to reduce costs and to uh, re-engineer our work processes. I would like to be informed of uh, of the the work by the government uh, in this regard, well, uh, f regarding the use of solar energy, we have this uh, feed-in tariff uh, system introduced some time ago. There are more than ten thousand. Well, I'm talking about your internal uh, re-engineering process. From what I have observed, government departments are slow in making changes. They will simply follow uh, past practice. So I would like to know what uh, you have done in your internal re-engineering process in the adoption of new technologies. Well, we have uh, tried to increase our uh, uh, work efficiency, and we have introduced a, a e registration system. This is good for enhancing uh, work efficiency. Under the e registration system, the data will be input by the applicant, by the, uh, and then the accuracy can be ensured, and we can match the data. For example, is a renewal uh, an application for renewal? We will monitor whether the uh, requirements have been uh, met, and uh, we we also have uh, to meet the continuous uh, professional education requirements. That you, the professionals uh, staff will have to. Uh, the professionals uh, concerned will have to submit information on uh, courses that they have attended. They can do this um, through online uh, transmission of information and we don't need to check the records uh, one by one. It's uh, good for the uh, applicant, it's more time uh, efficient for both the applicant and the department. I want to challenge you to Actually, we consider this. 
I am sure public funding uh, cannot be um, increased continuously. I understand that, yes, workload, of course, will be increasing because we have many NDAs and we need to work in energy conservation. How can you streamline your process? I hope this is something you would consider often. Thank you. Dr. Loe Kwok, second round. Thank you, Madam Chair. Well, as a representative from the engineering sector, I expressed my views on promoting energy conservation, and I'm, of course, using uh, solar energy and renewable energy are feasible. I think the EMSD is uh, forward thinking and being very, very bold in its ventures. The EMSD has identified the benefits of DCS and hence made huge effort in and drawing up legislation and in advocating it to the public. Uh, I was the chairman of the Bills Committee and therefore I have a quite a good understanding of the system. The DCS system in Kai Tak actually did not go over the initial budget. It was just paid in installments. Um, pipe installation, sewage system, all these need to be completed at an advanced stage. And uh, work was gradually increased at later phases. I would like to clarify that DCS is not only connected to um, commercial and uh, commercial buildings and residential buildings. The Children Hospital is using DCS and our new environmental uh, park will also be using DCS. So actually, this is uh, quite a useful uh, system in the district. The administration needs to explain to the public that the DCS being used in Kai Tak is uh, saving how much energy because the Kaitak part is already in use. I think the administration should let us know more clearly how much energy has been saved. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Dr. Lowe. Uh, there are many public facilities using the DCS, uh, such as shopping malls, schools, hospitals, the cruise terminal and even a government building. As of 2019-2020, um, um, could save around 20 million units of electricity. When The entire DCS is in place. It would reach out to 40 buildings in Kai Tak and every year will be able to save 85 million units of electricity. You can also estimate um, how many individual buildings have been saving money in not supplying air conditioning units. 
and systems because the energy efficiency is better than that of traditional central air conditioning systems. Well, since these individual buildings have not built in their central air conditioning systems, there should be a uh, conservation in energy or at least um, less money invested into the system. I think you should also provide us with such figures because um, we didn't build in a air conditioning system in a children's hospital and you should have saved huge amounts of money. Thank you. I think it saved around 5 to 10 percent of the cost. But this is only monetary. The building itself can actually uh, be uh, used. Um, all floor space could be used because there would not be any um, a generator generation room, and there is no um, noise pollution, etc. So there are actually many benefits that are not uh, quantitative. The DCS uh, actually has uh, many advantages. Mr. Chen Haken, second round. Thank you, Madam Chair. I hope you understand that I'm not trying to obstruct um, this proposal from being passed. I support it from energy saving perspective. However, as a electrical um, member, I have the responsibility to monitor the use of money. The director said that about two, 20 million units of electricity has been saved since the commissioning of the DCS in 2019. Well, Kai Tak has only been in use from 2013 to 2021, yet so much electricity has been saved. Can you provide us with figures next time? On whether you would be able to estimate a number in how much energy would be saved in the 30 years. It would instill more confidence in us to know of such figures. I just want this to be used as a reference. So in 30 years time, when people ask why, uh, whether it is cost efficient, why it's not cost efficient, then we will at least have this on paper that the director did uh, provide us with such figures 30 years ago. I'm, of course, I'm not going to uh, vote against your proposal, but then you must provide me with such figures. All right, Director. Yes, we'll be able to provide such information to members after the meeting. Any other questions from members? All right, we now put this item to vote. Are those in favor, please raise your hands. Are those against, please raise your hands. Oh, this item is carried. Do we need separate voting in Finance Committee? Mr. Chan can request separate voting. We now move on to the next agenda item. Item on Highways Department, a proposed creation of two supernumerary posts of Chief Engineer D1 in the Highways Department with immediate effect upon approval of the Finance Committee for three years to cope with the rapidly increasing workload relating to the maintenance of cross-boundary highway infrastructures other major highway infrastructures as well as aging public highway structures and to take part in various tasks relating to land supply and land use planning strategies. The administration um, 
consulted the um, panel on transport on November 20th last year. So present with us today is Mrs. Sharon Ip, Deputy Secretary for Transport and Housing, Ms. Jillian Lam, Principal Assistant Secretary for Transport, Mr. Jimmy Chen, Director of Highways, Mr. Nguai Kung, Deputy Director of Highways, Mr. Frankie Chow, Regional Highway Engineer, U Territories of Highways Department, Mr. Chen Wei, Tech Chief and Highway Engineer, Highways Department. Mr. Frankie Yik is the chairman of the panel on transport, but he's unable to attend our meeting today. So I will uh, read his report on his behalf. So on, on November 20th of last year, the panel on transport discussed with the government in the creation on six permanent posts, including four directorate posts, uh, to promote uh, some uh, pro projects and also to set up one chief engineer in a new territories regional office and urban regional office and they would be at the D1 level post. Members have conversa have reservations about the proposals and requested the administration to deploy manpower internally. Members also requested the administration to um, provide more information on why there is a need to create six permanent directorate posts in the highways department, on whether they, it would be cost effective, and on whether it could be feasible to create six supernumerary posts instead. The administration has adopted the comments and reduce the number of permanent posts from six to five and to instead create supernumerary posts instead. Information has already been sent to members via paper C B record four six five seven stroke twenty twenty one record O one. The item for members today is actually to create two supernumerary chief engineer Post uh, for the new territories regional office and urban regional office, as there is actually um, aging um, highways and roads and buildings. There is actually a present need to open these posts to ensure that um, these uh, structures uh, could be maintained and actually the lifespan extended. There are three members waiting to ask questions right now. Mr. Tony Tse, Dr. Lo Wai Kok, and Ms. Yong Ho Yen, five minutes each. Mr. Tony Tse, thank you. As an international metropolis, Hong Kong must ensure that our infrastructures are maintained. We have seen many aging structures and we need to look at it in our overall policy. It is very important to inspect and maintain and rehabilitate our highway structures because it is a safety issue. Therefore, um, there is a need for such work. And with the further development of the city, we need to inspect uh, some of the um, highway structures that were built earlier. I believe there is a need for such posts. The proposal is to have two supernumerary chief engineering posts, one in new territories and one in urban regional office. In paragraph 11, uh, we see there are over 900 public highway structures and around 600 in the urban regional office that were completed over 30 years ago. And in future, you would also be looking into 700 structures. So what? Um, so. 
can you only uh, work on 700 structures in three years? And uh, what are the criteria in selecting these uh, 700 highway structures? And lastly, for highways or subways, some of them have very low uh, utilization rates. When they were built, of course, there was some uh, estimate of usage, but it might, they might, it might turn out that uh, it might turn out that the usage is uh, so low, some are barely used. So, can you uh, carry out a review because uh, these structures? Uh, to take up space, and I understand that in the past some were demolished afterwards. Have you done this uh, kind of review, uh, Director? Thank you for your question, Mr. Chair. On uh, in repair and rehabilitation uh, work. We have uh, selected 700 out of the 1,500 1, which are over 30 years old. So the 700s are actually 40 years old or, or older. So we have selected the older structures for rehabilitation. So the, as for the uh, share of urban and at areas and anti, it's a 400 visa v 300. Roughly speaking, of course, we do carry out uh, regular maintenance and re re repair, depending on the uh, status of the building structure. There were regular inspections carried out to to, to verify the uh, status. So we do understand uh, these structures, and we have selected structures that are needed to support uh, uh, traffic and uh, these are considered um, more important ones and we need to at the, at the same time devise a re, re, inspection and rehabilitation strategy. In three years time we are going to carry out uh, the works uh, for these 700 structures and then uh, w with the existing uh, structures getting older and older we can uh, make reference to the strategy adopted for th for this run so the the uh, strategy will be applied not just to these 700 but also to other structures should these old structures be retained? Well, we will consider the uh, updated uh, traffic needs. Some older building structures, such as uh, a high f a flyover in some Shui Po, uh, because of the redevelopment, uh, the flyover is already fallen. Is already uh, fallen into. Disuse. We were going to demolish it to make way for other works. The plan uh, is to provide uh, parking spaces, much needed parking spaces now, to support uh, the development of the local community. So we take uh, timely measures to make the uh, best use of available. A space. Any frog? No? Uh, Dr. Lu Wai Kwok. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, the paper has set out the figures. Uh, the highways department was set up in 1986. Our road, highway network, our road network has uh, developed uh, a lot for public follow carriageway. In 1986, we have 3,400 kilometers of uh, road in Hong Kong, and at in uh, 20 and 20, at 2020 is a 6,000 more than doubled or almost doubled. We have 120 highway structures in uh, 1986. In 2020, 
uh, the number increased to 4,770. Uh, 4, it's a four-time increase. Uh, so far, they have just increased uh, one additional chief engineer post since uh, over the years, and now they want to uh, create uh, two more. These uh, building structures are aging, and therefore the workload has been increasing, and they need to have uh, better management uh, of uh, contractors, uh, maintenance work, etc. My question is, why is it that uh, you are going to pre create two supernumerary posts, and they are just for three years? I think I already sort of uh, under know what the answer will be about. Is that that uh, we want to um, reduce uh, costs in the current uh, pandemic situation? But it's obvious that you need to increase the manpower. But even if it's, they are supernumerary posts, why is it they are going to last for three years? Because the same argument will uh, reappear in three years' time. Why don't you uh, ask for the post to be uh, valid for five years? Well, thank you for your question, Dr. Lo. Why do we ask for these supernumerary posts? Uh, for three years, we all know that um, what kind of economic situation we are in. So we only select uh, the most urgent needed, urgently needed post and uh, ask for the post to be uh, ready for three years. We have selected the most. Uh, aged uh, buildings, uh, structures, and come up with a uh, inspection and rehabilitation strategy, which will guide how in the future other building structures can be maintained. And then we would uh, then by that time carry out a manpower review and then uh, make further suggestions. So we have a very clear goal of uh, achieving something uh, within this uh, this uh, three-year period. Uh, so the department is adopting a very prudent attitude. Maybe uh, uh, they have no other alternative uh, but to go for this. So I have to support this. Of course, I, I won't say that I would not support this application just because it's for, there for three years. I'm very confident that uh, in th after three years, you still need the th three, uh, the two chief engineers. You are not going to say that they will no longer be needed. But anyway, I will support the application. Ms. Eunice Young, well, I support the creation of these two posts, two chief engineer posts. They would have a very, a very heavy workload to carry out, including the checking of a uh, service of a uh, carriageway. Two days ago, I heard that because of the uneven road service, an old woman uh, slipped and uh, hurt her head. So we have seen uh, many such uh, incidents. And very often the highways department could not uh, react to, could not react to a cause for a repair in a timely manner. That old woman uh, was uh, unconscious, and uh, an ambulance had to be called to help her. So whether it's a shouting, and I'm also concerned about Hang Hao. A few years ago. At Bakshak Wall Village, uh, there was a set of traffic lights, and the road surface uh, 
was uh, in t in tatters. And we there were complaints, but uh, the act, the repair was not carried out very quickly. So with the creation of this course, uh, would you be able to react uh, more quickly to uh, requests for repair of roads? And also, would you be able to handle people's complaints uh, more e efficiently? Uh, would that be a performance pledge, in other words? Director? Well, we are also concerned about road safety, whether the roads uh, will be safe for our citizens. We may we have a program to monitor the roads. They will be sent out to make a rounds of inspections, so we don't just wait until an an an, an incident has happened. We do have a regular inspection program, but of course, uh, there is there are gifts and takes in terms of uh, deployment of manpower. We we'll consider factors such as whether the road is uh, heavily used and whether it's a new road or an old road. For damaged roads, uh, we would certainly arrange for repair as soon as quickly as we could. And of course, uh, we need to consider the usage for busy roads. We need to have some put we need to put in some temporary uh, traffic management arrangements before we can proceed to the repair work. Uh, the repair work itself may not be uh, very time consuming, but we need to talk to other government departments and put in place the temp temporary uh, traffic management measures first so that uh, other road users, road users will not be affected. Well, with the, the two new posts created and we have new resources, of course, uh, our work uh, process, process can be uh, enhanced. I've talked about road inspection. We we'll certainly uh, look at the uh, possibility of an work enhancement, for example, can we may consider increasing the frequency of uh, road inspection. We're talking about thousands of kilometers of road. So even making a small change uh, would involve uh, major changes to our work. And we'll have to make sure that uh, we have the resources to implement the enhanced uh, measures. We certainly want to do a better job in road re maintenance. Well, we know people uh, dial 1823 to launch their complaints. So uh, when we call the highways department or the lands department, uh, usually the phone calls uh, uh, were not uh, answered. And usually the, they have to use the uh, recording <coughs> surface. So can you uh, improve your, your work in this regard uh, instead of relying totally on 1823? Well, we do have hotlines and there are other means of uh, doing it. Apart from 1823, uh, they can use a mobile app to inform us and also the, the information, the various uh, channels of uh, communication uh, are set out in on our website. It's my turn to ask questions. Oh, we do have more and more um, highway structures in Hong Kong and the highway department is looking into creating two chief engineers to be in charge of work and I don't think we will object to it. But there is a um, brief history because originally um, there is to be a walkable city um, uh, division to be in charge of um, upslope um, escalators and also and universe and accessibility. 
uh, walkways. So these two are raised by our former chief executives, uh, Mr. Donald Tsung and Mr. Leung Shen Ying. Well, in the past few years, um, many supernumerary posts have already been proposed. We have the responsibility to monitor to ensure that um, there are not too many uh, new hires. Oh, originally, you wanted to uh, set to create a walkability project management office with uh, six permanent posts. You listened to our comments and decided to take back that proposal and instead create a supernumerary posts as well. However, without the walkability project management office, uh, would, act would there actually be a delay in these um, upslope escalators, for example, in the Sha Tin uh, Fubo estate, um, there's this really long slope that um, people need to walk up. Um, it has taken already many years for you to uh, look into that project and to conduct research. So it has taken many years. Uh, when are you able to come up with an initiative. Oh, thank you, Madam Chair. Our current proposal um, has taken four posts out of the six original proposed posts. We have listened to the views of LegCo members and decided to take out these four posts. However, it doesn't mean that we are not going to work on the walkability project. The um, upslope escalator and the um, accessible walkways for all projects are being handled uh, by our current staff and we will have manpower to be in charge and responsible for these projects. We, of course, hope to achieve it as soon as possible, but sometimes these are out of our control. We might not be able to complete it in our expectation. The uh, Sha Tin Um, case mentioned uh, by the uh, Madam Chair. I know that there is a very uh, long slope that belongs to um, the private property. So uh, we are going to try to do it as soon as possible. This part in uh, Saddle Ridge Garden, we were going to consider And with enough manpower, we will try to do the best we can. And of course, um, with more manpower, we'll be able to do more. However, we want to place on our priority our most pressing needs first. I'm not sure whether the information I've off hand is uh, to date. It seems that uh, out of the uh, nine um, research projects, about three of them have been approved only. So I think you contracted out. Why is the progress so slow? How many projects do you have on hand right now? I do hope you'll be able to submit the information to me before, both for the um, um, escalators and for the uh, walkways, I do want to know the progress. Um, how many are actually um, being done right now? Um, the 18 projects have already been identified earlier as they go ahead. However, due to various factors, we were not able to complete it. 
and after the meeting, we are going to uh, submit information on the progress of these 18 projects. Yes, uh, for the um, upslope escalator and also for the um, accessible walkways. Well, yes, I, I will progress, provide you with the information. Other than the 18 uh, projects, there are also uh, new escalators that we are looking into. Some of them would be um, begun um, this year uh, for a mature um, um, projects. We will uh, kick it off also together with these 18 previously identified ones. Uh, please provide information on also transportation nearby and uh, an up-to-date progress. Uh, pro progress. Thank you. Mr. Tony, the second round. Thank you, Madam Chair. First of all, I support the creation of these posts. However, I s we see there are many highways that need to be maintained, but there needs to be a large scale maintenance that may affect traffic. And therefore, there are many considerations before carrying out such in maintenance works. Some of the roads really need a major maintenance or large-scale rehabilitation. You can't just keep on uh, uh, filling the gaps and holes that appear on the roads because very soon uh, these holes will uh, reappear. I hope with these new posts we'll be able to carry out maintenance works as soon as possible. We also need to look into the cleanliness of the highways. Um, there are many um, small rocks and stones on the highways or small pebbles that sometimes impact the safety of vehicles. Very often, um, there are all these pebbles and stones along the side of the highway and I'm sure you've seen um, pe um, vehicles um, being hit by flying pebbles uh, sometimes from the highways above. I hope uh, the director will also take note of that. Uh, Mr. Martin Liao also has a question so I would like to first extend the meeting by 15 minutes. Uh, Dar Director. Sometimes um, uh, small holes appear on highways which we would uh, fix immediately. We were not able to conduct large scale um, maintenance, and therefore we would just try to um, conduct some quick fixes first. For large scale um, rehabilitation, then we would need to arrange uh, for the traffic and come up with a plan before we carry out such rehabilitation works. Some roads are very busy and it is difficult to arrange for such large scale rehabilitation. With the opening of the new post, we will have more resources to think of strategies to effectively maintain our roads. 
we are working also on uh, using um, more um, stable and uh, strong material for our roads and it has been effective in our trials. We are looking into the durability of the new material and how the performance is under prolonged use. We will adopt a new material when we identify suitable ones for Hong Kong. Safety is of the utmost priority. When we find objects that might impact traffic safety, we will engage our contractors to clean out the roads. We will step up our work on this end. Thank you. Mr. Martin Liao, first round. Thank you, Madam Chair. With the rapid expansion of road networks in Hong Kong and aging public highway structures here, we do need to come up with better strategies to rehabilitate our roads. Therefore, in principle, I support the creation of a supernumerary post. However, I have some concerns. In accordance with the paper, in the next three years, the two posts will be um, inspecting uh, comprehensively 700 highway structures, and um, they will assess the stability of the um, structures and the components. Every six months, the highways department also um, arranged for an inspection for all roads. And this is there actually overlap in work. Uh, if not, uh, what is the difference between the two kinds of work and how are you going to ensure there is no overlapping in work? In the past five years, there's a 56% increase um, in um, so, so it's from 940 million, it has already increased to 1.47 billion in 2021. And uh, work included will be on maintenance projects. Well, with the experience of contracting out this work, for the comprehensive inspection in the coming three years, when you uh, tender contractors, what would be the selecting criteria be? Uh, would price be a factor? If that's a deciding factor, then uh, what would be the weight of the different factors in your selection? Deputy Director. Thank you, Madam Chair. In relation to the 700 highway structures that would be comprehensively inspected and, and whether it will overlap with our um, six-month inspection, the six-month inspection is um, mainly um, inspection um, at a glance. However, for the 700 um, highway structures that are to be comprehensively inspected, we are talking about aging structures that would need uh, more testing, such as um, to uh, look into the um, in testing out the concrete to see whether it's still safe and sound, and also to take samples of the expansion joints 
this would be very comprehensive inspection and would need more resources. So this would mainly be for the aging highway structures. As for the uh, recurrent inspection that is carried out every six months, it is just a regular inspection and therefore there is no overlapping at all. On uh, tendering, uh, I would also like to say that uh, the time contract uh, tendering exercise is a two envelope system. That is to say, there's a technical assessment and there is another a cost uh, comparison. Under technical assessment, we assess the contractor's experience and the uh, te technological capability, and uh, there, there will be a score for both. Uh, Pass and we will not go award the tender to the lowest bidder. What's the uh, weighting in terms of percentage for the technical assessment and uh, cost, re respectively? Seventy percent for te 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 technical assessment and thirty percent for cost. Members, any further questions? If not, I put this item to the vote. For those in favour, please raise your hands. Uh, all in favour? Do, does anyone request this to be put to a separate voting? I would do, do this. Of course, uh, if you can provide uh, the additional information answering all our questions, that can be dispensed with. So, meetings adjourned.